currently there are three um, resources that I use for my devotional reading uh, in the morning. One of them is called Disciplines, and each week one author um, does the whole week and it follows the lectionary. Um, one is called Imaging the Word, and it's a coffee table book that has artwork and literature in it. So there may be a picture of a statue or a painting. Um, there will be words from a poem or a theologian. Um, and then the third one is called Province of Joy, Praying with Flannery O'Connor. Um, I want to share with you some words that were in the discipline disciplines um, this week. They were written by Michael Williams. And when he retired as a Methodist minister, he became the writer and storyteller in residence at Martin Methodist College in Pulaski, Tennessee. And every summer he would participate in the national storytelling um, convocation that they had in Jonesboro, Tennessee. I love to go hiking in the Nashville area's many parks. I experience a sense of peace and belonging as I walk along a trail and look at the sunlight slipping around the trees and limbs and dappling the leaf blanketed ground as far as I can see. I feel at home and at peace. Psalm 104 reminds us that God not only made everything, but the presence of the creator is woven through all creation. All we are and all we have are gifts from God and speak of God. Both my mother and father are in me. When you look at me, you see them because I embody so many of their characteristics. Looking at the human traits we inherit from our parents may help us understand what Jesus says to his followers. When Jesus says the Father is in him and he is in the Father, he is suggesting that when we look at Jesus, we see God. Perhaps this is the reason that writers in the early church claim that Jesus was both fully human and fully divine. God does not want us to be enslaved to a spirit of fear, a spirit that keeps us from doing what we are asked to do by God. God is watching over us to comfort us and give us courage as we make the journey through the darkness, through our fear, to do what God asks us to do. In both Greek and Hebrew, one word means spirit, wind, and breath, pneuma and ruach. When Paul writes that God's spirit witnesses with our spirit that we are children of God, he describes a kind of conspiracy, a breathing together between God and us. To conspire simply means to breathe together. Jesus tells his followers not to be afraid as he prepares them for a time when he will no longer physically be present with them. Not only does he tell those whom he loves not to be afraid, he instructs them not to let their hearts be troubled by the circumstances that might otherwise prod them into that fearful place. Jesus replaces fear and a troubled heart with a sense of trust in the God of love and in himself as he revealed that loving God to them. Trusting in God allows us to begin to trust in others, which is a step toward loving others as Jesus loves us. Perhaps listening and comprehending comprehending belongs at the heart of our celebration of Pentecost. 
perhaps the best way we can celebrate Pentecost as Christians is to open our ears, to focus our minds, and to listen deeply to those around us. But if the heart of Pentecost lies in the listening, may listening become the spiritual practice at the heart of who we are as the followers of Jesus, just as it did on that Pentecost long ago. And the following is a quote um, from Imaging the Word, and it's from David Buttrick, who um, was the, uh, was at Vanderbilt. Now, do you want to know a secret? Making new, that's what's going on in the world. That's what's happening. The holy city is not future perfect, it's present tense. Check out the Greek verbs in the text. Now the holy city is descending. Now God is making things new. Right now God is wiping tears and easing pain and overcoming the power of death in the world now. There's nothing otherworldly about the vision. It's happening now in the midst of our worn, torn, broken world. And with the eyes of faith, you can see it happening. This next quote is from Praying with um, Flannery O'Connor, and it's by Martin Buber from The Eclipse of God. All religious reality begins with what biblical religion calls the fear of God. It comes when our existence between birth and death becomes incomprehensible and uncanny, when all security is shattered through mystery, the inscrutableness of which belongs to its very nature. It is the unknowable. Through this dark gate, which is only a gate and not as some theologians believe a dwelling, the believing person steps forth into the everyday, which is henceforth hallowed as the place in which one has to live with the mystery. 